Hey guys, welcome back to Adventure Camp and Tactical Nut here. And yes, back out in the woods again. Meant to go last week, but I got up, got my car loaded, and the battery was dead. So too much time going around getting a battery, installing a new one. So making up for it uh, this weekend. And if you notice, the backdrop is a little different. And that is because right over there, there's a Boy Scout troop camping right where I normally do. So had to make a couple of trips because I didn't pack for having to walk any kind of distance. Most of it is in here. I just have a duffel bag over there. Um, and then of course uh, a log bag to carry the tools and stuff. Um, but yeah, gonna put my tent right up over here. I checked up where I'm going to be setting the tent. There's no dead trees. It's pretty open over in that spot. Cause as you can tell right around me, there's pretty much lots of fallen trees this is what was behind the camera while i'm talking um so yeah plenty of firewood for sure <clears throat> i don't have to worry about getting any of that um only biggest worry is going to be cold uh when i got out of the car I said it was 37 because i got up this morning to about 22 degrees i think it was um and that's what it's supposed to get down to tonight somewhere between 20 25 uh so last minute through a couple extra things to keep warm i got a down blanket that I'm gonna use in conjunction with my uh, sleeping bag. Uh, also have a wool blanket just in case this isn't cutting it because my Outdoor Vitals bag is only a 35 degree bag. So, uh, but I think with the blanket, I'm gonna try that first just to see how warm that helps or how warm that keeps me. Um, then of course, if it doesn't work, I can always uh, toss on the wool blanket. Um, it's just one of those Harbor Freight ones, so it's kind of itchy, so you don't want to put it directly on you, but over the sleeping bag, it'll be fine. All right, let me get my tent set up and then uh, we'll start the hunt for some wood. And luckily, I don't have to go too far. <laughs> All right, stick around. All right, so I know I didn't show this part last time. I just showed it fully assembled. This is one of the reasons why it's so lightweight. As you can see, the top is almost completely mesh but you still have like the bathtub style bottom. Uh, you have a pouch here to keep gear in uh, and one over there. Um, and like I said, I mean, literally this part right here, putting the tarp down and then setting this up probably took three minutes top. So very easy and very intuitive to shut, set up. And I could probably tighten up that corner a little bit and I'll do that in a second and then put on the fly. All right, so when I talked about it being uh, going to be really cold and having to make some adjustments, I'm going to try something a little different with this setup. Um, just like last time, I used the X lounger as the sleeping pad. And still going to do the same. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm still absolutely loving this Outdoor Vitals uh, sleeping bag. Uh, zippers are awesome. Got a little pouch in here for you to store like your phone or something. Well, I don't know if I'll do the phone in there. Uh, even though I know it's going to get really cold. Uh, I don't want to accidentally roll over it in the middle of the night and crack it or something, because that would be my kind of luck. Uh, but what I am going to do is put the thermal rest sleeping pad inside of it. Uh, this is the two-sided one that's kind of supposed to reflect some heat back on you. <clears throat> oh yeah, and I don't think I ever mentioned with the sleeping bag that it is designed to actually connect to a, another sleeping bag. So if you had somebody with you in a bigger tent, uh, you could zip your sleeping bags together. I think that's kind of a cool idea. Um, not sure I'll ever use it, but I only have one of these sleeping bags, so I guess it kind of wouldn't matter. <laughs> have to get another one. But the idea is pretty cool. And now I get this in there. I can straighten it all up a little bit better. I also have, where did I put it? I just got this recently, a climate pillow. Um, oh yeah, and I did bring my climate uh, sleeping pad cover. I guess I need to get that out and um, wrap my sleeping pad. Uh, but the reason why I got this, I want, really wanted to test out a new pillow, but this one only weighs two ounces. So that's pretty awesome. Um, I do have the uh, X lounger pillow in here. I went ahead and inflated it. I'll keep it in the back. Um, just in case for some reason I find out in the middle of the night that I don't like that. I don't like this one. At least I have the other one as a backup. 
uh, oh, actually 2.25 ounces. Okay, close enough. But how about this? little X shape the X pillow and uh, yeah I'll let you know in the morning what I think about that one uh, for now I guess I should get the sleeping pad cover so that I uh, wrap my sleeping pad All right, <clears throat> so I got the sleeping pad cover on and now for the down blanket I got to tell you what I've used this once on a camping trip mostly just around the house um, just watching TV and stuff like that, but this blanket is incredibly warm, very soft and comfy, so hopefully tonight it will definitely help preserve a lot of heat for me. Um, oops. And just uh, take a tripod here for a second. You can see that I got the sleeping pad cover on now. It does snap underneath to help it stay in place. Um, but I am looking forward to what should be a very toasty night of sleep. So you can see you can tie off these to keep them out of your way when you're loading the tent and stuff, getting in and out. But of course, zip it all up and be nice and tight with these little toggles. Uh, once you're ready to go to sleep, Last week or a couple weeks ago, it did perfect. All right, we'll get back to you.
So this was interesting. I saw how this tree had broken. So I figured all this is pretty good and dead and dying. So I make a cut. And at first it just started pouring out like crazy, but now it's just like that. So I guess you could say this is not good for burning. <coughs> Tastes good though. All right, so uh, got camp all set up. Got the firewood cut. That took an unusually long time. Uh, just most everything else coming by was rotted. I just had to keep going and going and going, looking for something that would work. So it took more time than I wanted, but it's about 2.30 now. Temperature's already starting to drop, but wearing all this gear, it's actually keeping me fairly warm. So I didn't even bring a jacket to wear on the way back because I mean, if I started to go a little cold I'll just hike faster um, but hopefully you can get the rifle I didn't forget the drop leg holster uh, I know a lot of people still critique this one because it's an old military version uh, but don't worry eventually I'm going to get me a more modern and Kydex one probably because I do have a new handgun on the way ordered it last night not going to tell you what it is i'm going to leave that as a surprise uh, but if you follow us on instagram adventure camping 1119 you'll probably see it there first because i'm sure the day i get it i'll have to show it off but uh i'm pretty excited about what i'm getting so Phew. get a little tired this time that was a lot more wood cutting than i have to because i had to keep processing pieces or cutting off limbs and stuff only to find that it was rotten doing that over and over that gets you tired but uh all right I need to drink some water just ate a protein bar and then held some uh trail mix to go with it because other than that all i have was a protein shake and a cup of coffee this morning so i need some calories all right, I will, sorry the sun's right behind me, talk to you when I get set up and ready to shoot. Notice anything different about the rifle? Maybe something around here? Yeah, on my way hiking out here, the red dot came off. And it was strange, the whole way here I was thinking about the red dot because I was like, did I turn it off? The last time I was using it. If not, I got an extra battery in here. But I just kept thinking it over and over. I'm like, what? Just couldn't get the red dot out of my head. And then I get here. And I look at my rifle. <sighs> not cool. Alright, so a little shoot and move. I do have a new flashlight on here. It's a Knight Newman. I've tested and reviewed it a long time ago. Uh, fit in a quick detach mount that I found on Amazon. If I can remember the name of it, I'll post it in the link below. Let's we'll see how it holds up. It really takes some getting used to with the iron sights when you've been using the red dot.
enough for today. Time to head back. <sighs> Need to eat. Oh. Yes, I know this is supposed to be on the side. I'm going to have to stop screaming. Uh, figure out a system for myself if I'm going to use a drop leg, how to get the rifle around. Work with the swing a little bit just because, uh, obviously, I am not an expert. As you can see, there's a few issues here and there. Uh, that's why we practice. Hopefully, towards the end of February, I'm going to be taking a training class. So, kind of excited about that. Uh, but anytime I get a chance to practice with my gear, that's what I'm going to do. All right, guys, we will see you back at kick. And wish me luck on finding the red dot. If you pray, go ahead, put that prayer in now. It wasn't really expensive, but I really don't want to have to replace something else. Alright, so I just started the Trangia, so I can eat really soon. Got back from hiking the trail again. I did not find my red dot on the way home, and so uh, we're on the way back to camp. So I dropped all my stuff in my car, came back to the campsite to see if it was around here, and hiked back out and back again, and nothing. And I mean, I was kicking leaves around, retracing every step, but I walked in the middle of the trail the entire way, so I can't imagine that thing would bounce several feet off. But I'm wondering if it's possible that somebody saw it and picked it up. I don't know, but that sucks. Oh, got this the other day. It's by 50-50. Back, double vacuum insulated growler, 64 ounces. I got it at Target for $15. Couldn't wait to get it out here. Good way to carry water. Great little handle. Um, also carried a couple canteens, but uh, this would probably be more than everything I need just for cooking and stuff. Um, beef stew is the food of the evening. Um, I know I keep saying that I really want to try cooking other stuff. <laughs> But then it comes a day of camping, and I'm like, I just need to get out there, and I just stop at Walmart and pick up something like this. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, in the near future, I will start, you know, either doing like steaks or chicken or something like that. Something a little more creative than freeze-dried meals. Unfortunately, these are just really quick and easy and convenient, and that tends tends to win out. Um, Temperature's dropping pretty fast already. Uh, like I said, it was supposed to be in the 20s tonight. Low 20s or possibly 20 degrees. Uh, let's see if my phone registers. Uh, not when I get out here. Um, I mean, it has to be in the mid 30s or something right now. I just got back from hiking, so I'm not that cold yet. Uh, but I even brought ski pants in case it gets really cold while I'm sitting by the fire. Um, it was just taking a good while to get enough wood together or what will hopefully be enough. Um, there's tons of small stuff, so I can do endless feeding of the fire. That's no problem, but I was just hoping to get more bigger logs so I wouldn't have to do it as much. But uh, from what I was finding, there wasn't a whole lot to pick from. Um, really bummed about that red dot, I'm telling you. <laughs> I really, there's one thing when you break something and have to replace it, to me, that's not so bad because I don't know, you're using it. <laughs> Losing stuff probably is probably the thing that drives me the most crazy in life because it's, you know, I guess you could just say irresponsibility. I mean, that thing's always been rock solid on that rifle. I've, I check it frequently to see, you know, make sure the mount is good. Um, so how it came off, I have no idea. Uh, I just know that now I am out one red dot and that really sucks. All right, well, let me get some more stuff for this fire going while this water is starting to boil. And I'm telling you, I know I've used this Trangia a lot. The little bio stove, I know I've showed it before, um, but I'm telling you, works really well. I just, I'm probably going to need to get one that's bigger if I want to do more stuff with it. Uh, this is pretty much about all you can really do with it. <laughs> so not as useful for a lot of people, but... I don't know. We'll see. 
All right, let me get some uh, wood burning. All right, time to get the fire going. I'm still eating, but it's too... Sorry about all the camera movement. Maybe if I just put it on the ground. Using a little trioxane today. Uh, I have a bunch of it and just... Need to get rid of it. <laughs> Woo, it's blinding me. There we go. Triaxin is awesome. I mean, it's not a natural tinder. Uh, as you can see, the color that it burns. Uh, during the day, it's a little harder to see, so you just have to be a little more careful with it. But it is extremely reliable. Oh, sorry. And extremely cheap <laughs> which is a huge bonus you can usually get a box of three bars on average two to three bucks a box and I mean I can easily get uh, what do you say probably three fires out of each one pretty easy uh, you just got to make sure you wrap it up really good because if not it will dry out because um, it is what am I looking for? I'm trying to say here. It's not natural, it's artificial. I guess it's more like a petroleum based kind of thing. Um, so, as you see, upside down fire is my favorite and most marvelous fire. I was going to do a different version of it, building like sticks to make a ramp with larger logs to roll into it as it's uh, burning. Um, but just with the number that I was able to get today, it just wasn't going to be possible. We'll probably try it next time. I'm just going to have to find a location that has uh, not so rotten wood. Because that was kind of a bust today. Alright, I am going to get warmed up by this fire. Listen to some tunes like I've been doing. And just enjoy my evening. And I'll get back to you later. All right, so you may be able to tell that the temperature is dropping quite quickly, and sorry. All right, so as you can probably tell, uh, the temperature is dropping quite quickly. So I had to get out the wool hat and another jacket. This beef stew is outstanding. Thumbs up to that. If you haven't tried it, you'll like it. Um, I had to switch to my phone because the SD card filled up on the GoPro. So, hey, awesome. But uh, I'll show you. Hold on. I got some glove liners I'm going to be trying out in a little bit. They're from Under Armour, just like the jacket. Not necessarily a matching camo, but not too far off. This is just more green. Uh, so maybe wearing those to bed along with the wrapped on fleece gloves. Uh, or even just to have camp. Because once I get the fire started, uh, I'm just going to be sitting around and just getting colder without the fire. So, mm. Wow. Yeah, this is really good. I still like the lasagna better, but... I love beef stew. And sorry about the camera angle. But I have to hang it on the chair that I was sitting in. Because I can't get it to balance on the tripod. I didn't bring the phone attachment for it. And aside from losing the red dot, I actually had a pretty good day. Uh, a lot of fun out shooting. I mean, cutting wood was cutting wood. I... Like I said before, I really wished I could have gotten more, but uh, I've got tons of small stuff behind me. And some slightly thicker. They're a little more rotted, but you got to fire hot enough, it's going to burn pretty much anything. Just don't want to try to start it with any of that. Because then it'll just smolder. Mm. All right. 
I'm going to eat. And then we'll get back to you. Oh, and a little convenience. The, hopefully you can see it. Um, a little lantern, just hung it from a tree. Uh, the tent I didn't show earlier actually has a little hook in the peak of the uh, arch above your head. So when I'm getting in the tent at night, I hang it from there. So I can see what I'm doing. Get dressed, undressed, all that kind of stuff. Or just situated. But very convenient. Battery life on that thing's really good. I've already reviewed it, so you can check that out if you want. Highly recommend it. That's why I keep using it. Just always remember that. If you see a review of mine, and then you see me using it again, that's when you really know that it's good. I mean, I have to keep moving on and buying new stuff and keep getting new stuff to review. But if you're still seeing me use it for a long time after I've reviewed it, while I'm reviewing other stuff and testing out other stuff, you know it's worth the money. Oh. This will be the last. Hope you can read. I think it's upside down. Oops. Um, flashlight. To, this is the last trip to review. I've been carrying it every day for several months. 600 lumens or 610. The brand is Sofren SC31. Outstanding. And it has the best strobe I've ever used on a flashlight. I will say that. Um, if you don't want to wait for the review, just go ahead and buy it. <laughs> it is USB rechargeable. Hopefully you can... See the little piece there, and IPX8 weatherproof. So, pretty awesome little uh, flashlight. All right, I'm going to finish eating and get this fire started because my hands are getting really cold. We'll get back to you. All right, just give you a quick idea of why I like this flashlight so much. This is the low mode. I don't have the specs with me, so I'm not sure how many lumens this is. <clears throat> but I will say if this uh, comes up better than the GoPro, then I'm going to start using my phone for this. Because <laughs> the GoPro sucks at doing flashlight reviews. Alright, so this is low, medium. And then high. I think it's quite impressive. I love 18650 batteries. Um, because you get a long life, decent output from them. And then, of course, here's my favorite part. So, strobe warning. It's really close. Pretty cool, huh? I like it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> it's about 7.15, and it is really freaking cold this morning. <laughs> um, I mean, it got really, really cold last night, but I will tell you what, my setup sleep system worked wonderfully. Um, I slept so tasty warm. Uh, tasty warm. Toasty warm. Uh, all I had on was this uh, <clears throat> Under Armour outer shell. Um a t-shirt under that and then under that I had the military lightweight uh, shirt these pants these are like nylon pants with the fleece lining that's all I had on there and then my wool socks and so the sleeping bag and um, down blanket combo perfect I mean I was so warm it was amazing um, I was wearing the fleece line gloves or the not the fleece gloves, the uh, glove liners that are just under there. Um, I didn't wear the fleece ones because I didn't need it. Uh, the pillows, the climate pillow was very comfortable, but I'm a side sleeper. <clears throat> so I'm happy I had two because that gave me enough distance to uh, sleep comfortably. Because with just the one, it was not. <laughs> um, if you were a back sleeper, it'd be perfect. Or hammock camping, I think it would still work really well. It's just for me, being a side sleeper. Um, having a really thin pillow just doesn't work out that well. Uh, but having the inflatable sleeping pad with the thermal rest inside, uh, I mean, didn't fill the ground at all. Kept plenty of warmth with the climate sleeping bag light or the uh, sleeping pad cover. Um, and I'll tell you, hopefully I can show you. 
the camera will switch while filming. Maybe not. Um, <clears throat> see, this way. There's some condensation, hopefully, you can see from, like, right here. And the outside is was covered with a lot of condensation, but very little was actually on the mesh. And so none of it got on the meat or the sleeping bag or the down blanket. So <clears throat> the ventilation on this is excellent. I will say that. And, uh, yeah, now I'm probably just going to go ahead and start getting packed up. Um, I did wake up a couple of times in the middle of the night. One is, I mean, I went to bed around 9, 930, which I never do at home. Um, usually I'm between like 1 and 3. Uh, so I woke up at one <laughs> and I was up for a while um, and I basically just laid there because it was just so warm being in that sleeping bag that I just did not want to move um, but it wasn't that I was uncomfortable that I woke up it's just I went to bed way too early and for me that always backfires and I end up waking up a lot because I can't sleep a lot in one stretch um, all right guys hopefully you enjoyed the video um, <clears throat> yeah, all the batteries were freezing up, so it was hard to get anything recorded. I tried to delete some from the some old videos from the GoPro, um, and I kept it in my sleeping bag last night. But instead of risking it, I just used the phone again. Because um, usually, once you turn the GoPro on and it's this cold outside, it goes from full to like one bar within minutes. So, all right. Like I said, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I had a blast. Now it's time to get myself a little bit warm, put the glove liners back on on this one because uh, you can't work the foam with them on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, lots of fun guys. And uh, in the meantime, y'all be prepared and have fun.